deep as possible in the quickest possible time. Guys, you have to make a pile driver in just eight hours. And all you've got to produce that is that dodgy old motor and anything you can find out there in our mechanical graveyard. Right, guys, are you ready to get your hands dirty? Because when that light goes green, you can start in three, two, one, go! <laughs> Light is the signal for the blue team to fly outside like a flock of magpies, attracted to anything bright and shiny in the factory yard. And their beady eyes have fallen in particular on the cogs, sprockets and chains of a previous mutant machine. That's a weight with a wheel on it, or uh, uh, an axle on it, with a uh, cantilever beam. The Reds' approach is to put pen to paper, and once again it's a case of the academic versus the practical. The only things the two sides have in common are identically equipped workshops with an equal desire to win. So who will make it through to the next round, the boffins or the bodgers? You decide. My name's Alex Bradshaw, I study mechanical engineering at the University of Sussex. I'm interested in Volkswagens, I've got a camper van. Hi, my name's Peter Ball, I'm a mechanical engineering student at Sussex University and I have an interest in electric cars. My name's Martin Dalton Brown, I study automotive engineering at Sussex University and I also like Beatles, campers, anything flat for really, hence the name. Hello, my name is Oliver Osborne and I'm studying automotive engineering and my hobby is motorsport. Yeah. <laughs> now then, you flat fours, what are you up to? At last we've got some action because there's been a lot of talking, hasn't there? <laughs> yeah, we're planning ahead, thinking about what we're going to do. Have you decided now? Sort of, yeah. So. <laughs> we're going to, we've changed plans completely. What we're going to do now is going to uh, put that huge lump of metal over there, coming out the back here drive around, put the stakes in and just hammer it into the ground. That big piece of metal over there, yeah, what is it? Where's it from? Uh, a forklift truck. OK. <laughs> and you're going to put that inside the car? Yeah, out the back. Yeah. And then we're going to winch it up, yeah. put the stake in the way and let it go and just let it whack the stake into the ground. A couple of times, drive on and do the next stake. OK. Are you confident about this plan? Absolutely. No, no problem at all. <laughs> all four of you? Oh, yeah, we're all fine. We're yeah. going to win, it's not a problem. But not if the Blues have their way. Back outside, they're still collecting absolutely everything that might be of use for their mutant machine. And they're taking it right from under the noses of the competition. So, let's meet the magpies. Uh, oh, sorry, the jeepers. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell, uh, our IT manager, and uh, my hobbies are Land Rovers and bikes. Hi, I'm Stuart Jett, computer system manager, and I enjoy driving jeeps off-road. Hi, I'm Graham Taylor, I'm um, a steel fabricator and I build promotional vehicles. Yeah, you want that socket to go over. Hi, my name's Paul Roderick, I've been an engineering designer for over 30 years and uh, I'm a confirmed petrol head. That petrol head and his mates are bringing their booty back into the workshop. With an hour gone, they're feverishly working out how to put it all together. And at long last, they're actually making a plan. We need to get this cage. Yeah. Up there. The forklift cage. Yeah. Yeah, so good. What's to base it on? Yeah. Those, the stuff outside. We can put some cross bits here. Yeah. Put in the middle. Yeah, that'll work. To run a cam. Yeah. On a barrier yeah, that injures. That'll do. And waves that backwards and forwards. Yeah. Then we can anchor the chain. Now, listen, I want to ask you about this frame here. This one right here. Oh, yes. What is that going to do? It's going to go from there yeah. up to the roof. Yeah. And it's going to take some cross members. And the cross members will take the power take off from the wheel yeah. up to the sprockets that we stole off the metro outside. Yeah. And then what you see over there is the great weight and the great weight frame. And then we'll put the axle across, drive it outside, mm -hmm. make a Formula One quick acting jack so that we can move it up for speed, maybe, if there's time, and, <laughs> and uh, just bang the post in, move along to the next one, and away we go. So it's a frame to take the strain? It is indeed. I see. You're a bit of a speed merchant, you, aren't you? No, I get the feeling. No, absolutely not, no. No, a very, very, very careful driver. Do you know a lot about cars? Mm, yeah. 
<laughs> Do you think having a background, knowing a lot about cars and mechanics, is really going to help today? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, there's only just one thing that you tend to treat cars with reverence normally, but today we don't. Hey, <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> Now then, Jeff, you're looking busy. What are you up to here on the workbench? I'm um, trying to make a large weight out of an old electric motor. We've basically got the weight here in the motor anyway. Mm -hmm. And the plan is just to move the mount here so it's central, so that we can suspend it from our mechanism and, and just drop it on the fence posts repeatedly. Oh, I see. So this is going to be the weight that's yeah, going to drive that, that stake into the ground. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's one heavy piece. There's about, there's about 50 pounds there, I reckon. Okay, it should, that... should do the trick. Talking of tricks, the opposition seem to have nothing up their boiler suit sleeves other than their arms. And even at this early stage, the Blues are, dare I say, hammering home their advantage. In a desperate bid for inspiration, the Rookie Reds are in deep discussion with our resident expert, Professor Martin Smith, of the Technology Innovation Centre. And frankly, he's confused. Well, what the Red Team plan to do is uh, take a heavy weight on the end of a long bar, mm. put that on a pivot inside the back of the car and hammer the uh, pile into the ground that way. The problem with this idea is um, because this pivot is quite low and the pile is quite high, the weight is going to be hitting the pile at the wrong angle. So it's going to tr be trying to push the pile that way. So the pile will try to be trying to be bending this way and could break. Yeah, it's going to be skew with, isn't that's it, in the right. ground? Yeah, that's okay. right. So that's quite risky. And the other slightly inelegant thing about this is um, they're going to try and lift this weight by a, a sort of standing on the top of the car and pulling it up with a rope. Manually. Uh, manually, which is uh, rather defeats the object of having a car, really. Which is why he's a professor and they're undergraduates. But undaunted, they decamp to the yard to find yet more bits for their human-powered pile driver Mark II, or possibly three. The professor is pulling his hair out is with it? you guys. Oh, Every right. time he comes back to visit you, you've, uh, you've gone to plan B, C, yeah, D and E. That's right, you know. <laughs> keep him on his toes, it'd be boring, I guess. Um, it's uh, <laughs> proving to be quite a challenge so far, isn't it? Yeah, trying to find things. Yeah. Yeah, the right size. Everything's a little bit, just like, that little bit too big or a little bit too small. But we're getting there. This is the right size. So. And your main source of power is going to be human hands. Absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't go wrong, does it? It doesn't oh. break. Well, it might do, actually. We might get injuries, I don't know. Um, oh, I can't wait to see this. No, it'll be good. It'll be fine. You've got a lot of confidence. <laughs> no problem. I do now. And they'll need every scrap of confidence they can muster because the prof's been running his rule over the Blues Beast and he's pretty impressed, though not, it has to be said, 100%. They're going to run off the, drive off the front wheel, which is nice, mm -hmm. uh, with a sprocket, a chain going around a big sprocket up here. Mm -hmm. As that sprocket rotates, it's going to move this bar up and down. Mm -hmm. As this bar moves up and down, this, this bar here is going to be sort of pivoting backwards and forwards. Yep. As it does so, it's going to pull this chain over another sprocket here, lift up a weight, and they're going to drop it onto the pile. There's a lot going on there, isn't there? There is a lot going on there. <laughs> and what I've done is I've left things off because uh, to show all these arms and levers and mechanisms, I've left off the supports, but they're going to have to support uh, this sprocket here and this pivot here on the car somehow. So um, it, it's quite an elaborate sort oh, of uh, That's mechanism. where the frame comes in, I take it. Well, they've decided to have a channel to drop the weight down, another channel to hold the pile vertically, um, which is a bit ambitious. But what they haven't thought of is when they jack up the car in order to let this wheel spin free, the car's going to be tilted at an angle and all their mechanism is going to be tilted at an angle so that the pile is not going to be able to go in vertically. Oh, that could pose a problem. <laughs> it could. Have you kept that one to yourself? Have you told them? <laughs> well, I've asked them. I said, what's going to happen when the car is jacked up? And there was a sort of, oh. And there's another, oh, when the blues try out their speed jack. The sound of splitting wood shows that this heat might not be the foregone conclusion it had first appeared. Tell us what you tried to do. Well, that was just a Formula One jack. So you <laughs> put it under the car, push it down, it lifts it up quick. But we have the technology to rebuild him. It might only be a mini metro, but it's uh, got a bit of weight to it now. It's got uh, the frame and the roller. Uh, yeah, on. yeah, this is the main problem now. Yeah. It's about a ton and a half. <laughs> 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 well, not to worry, it's fairly robust. It doesn't move much. Oh, yeah. You're that... right there, Graham. <laughs> you may swear. 
<laughs> that ain't going nowhere. No, it's all right. All right, then. Well, uh, crack on. We'll have a go. Time is ticking. And time, as they say, stops for no man, though the Reds have been hoping to slow the clocks down just a little to give themselves a chance to play catch-up. This huge wooden structure is their latest plan. Hinge from the back of their car at one end and with a blooming great weight at the other. If nothing else, it'll scare the stakes into submission. It's time to down tools for a moment here in the Mute Machines workshop, but stay with us because when we return, we'll be finding out which team has the wits to stop the pile drive doing the splits. Welcome back to Mutant Machines. We're halfway through our pile driver playoffs to find out which of those red and blue teams will be able to drive this stake deep into the ground in the quickest possible time. They've got just eight hours to devise a contraption to do that job. So who will be the winners and who will get the splinters? All morning it had been looking like the splinters would be going to the flat fours, the VW Fanatics dressed in red. After frittering away the first few hours on one design after another, they eventually opted for lifting their huge hammer by hand. The Jeepers Mutant Machine, by comparison, will be fully automatic, with a huge weight raised by the power of their Metro engine via a series of chains, cams, rods and arms driven from the front wheel. But the prof reckons it might be just a little too complicated. They've put a lot of weight on this car and they're not exactly lightweight team members in themselves. So I suspect when they jack up this car, it may just stay where it is and the jack will sink into the ground. Suppose they do sink a bit. Uh, they've tried to calculate that when the car is jacked up, then the, the, the weight goes down in a vertical line. Uh, which is what they need, but if they jack it up or if it sinks that vertical is not going to be vertical anymore And that's going to mean that the um, Spike the pile isn't going to be driven into the ground vertically, so um, they have a worry there Yeah, there's a lot more going on. But there's a lot more to go wrong. Isn't Absolutely it? right. So would you put your money on at this stage? Uh, I think probably the blues, but because the reds have gone for a much simpler design they could actually win which is music to the ears of the Reds and the first good news they've had all day. At last, they're beginning to think laterally, an essential ingredient for Mutant Machine, and have pressed their axle stands into service as makeshift pivots, the only potential weak point where the heavy metal of those stands meets the car. Car bodywork is very, very thin metal, surprisingly thin, so there is a risk that that's go those welds are going to tear out with the shock of the hammer hitting the pile. Right, there's going to be a lot of vibration running yes. through that vehicle, yes. isn't there? Yes. The Blues are worried about potential weak spots too, so are doubling up the welds where the stress on their machine is likely to be the greatest. So is there a better way? Right, let's take a look to see how the professor would have tackled this problem. Prof, I know you've been putting pen to paper. You had an idea from the word go, didn't you? Yes. I, I'm, the idea here is to keep, keep it as simple as possible mm. and to use the, the motor in the car to lift the weight of the, uh, th that's going to drive the pile into the ground. So I'm also trying to keep the, uh, the weight over the centre of the car. So here's the pile, here's the heavy weight. Uh, I put a pulley up, mounted on, the, on, a, on a sort of A-frame onto the back of the car. Uh, an A-frame is simple and strong. And over the pulley, I run a rope down here to a pulley welded onto the front wheel of the car. So you jack up the car, spin up the engine, uh, this drags on the rope, lifts the weight, and then when your weight is at the top, uh, you just press the clutch and the weight drops onto the pile. Ah, like, I get it. And that way you can put miles more piles into the ground. Oh, I like it. And hopefully <laughs> miles of smiles. Um, neither team came up with that, though, did they? And, and yours does seem the simplest and the most a well-balanced option. I think most people tend to be a little ambitious. They say, oh, it's eight hours, plenty of time, and they do an elegant design and they cut everything nice and elegantly, when really, if you can think of something as simple as possible to start, this is the way to go if you can. If only everyone thought like you, eh? <laughs> uh, you need people to be as simple as me. OK, teams, you better be thinking about pulling your finger out because you've got one hour of building time left. <laughs>
Then Metro is going to wheelie, I think. You think so? I reckon so. I reckon we'll see him wheeling off over the horizon with all that weight on the back. Do you think you've got your weight to be used to drive? We're going to have a fat bugger in the uh, driver's seat. <laughs> Probably me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> OK, guys, your eight hours work time is almost over when that green light goes to red. Now, when I give you the go ahead, you can start your engines and commence out of these doors on your parade lap on your way to the test area. Guys, are you ready? Work time is over in three, two, one. OK, gentlemen, start your engines. OK, teams, you have just five minutes for your mutant machines to drive these posts as deep into the earth as humanly possible. Are you ready for this? Yeah. OK, right. Ready it's time to stake out in five, four, three, two, one, go! The Blues get off to what can be best described as an erratic start, and the Reds immediately cash in on their opposition's misfortune. They quickly abandon their rooftop road trick and by muscle power puff and pant their way into a narrow lead. <laughs> Suddenly, next door, disaster strikes. Their chain wraps itself around the bottom sprocket, causing the well to fail at the top. Oh no! So now, instead of man, or men, against machine, it's man against man. Have the jeepers had their last gasp? Will red lungs beat blue lungs? Who's on their last legs? And while we're on body parts, it's neck and neck. A bit wobbly. The two end ones went well. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, in the red corner. <laughs> oh, that's not going anywhere. What about this one? Oh, that's had a real hammering. That took a pretty good blow. Oh no, that first one's definitely a bit ropey. You know what? I think we're gonna have to have a steward's inquiry and call in the professor with his tape measure. <laughs> So pose number four, we can't really count because okay. it's still under pressure. No, I, that's right, yes, that's not finished. Mm. That's not a finished post. OK, that's disqualified. I, I think so. Let's move on to number three. Right. Well, this post is... 48 inches above okay. ground. Post number two. Post number two... is 54 inches above ground. Oh, that's a, a long way above sea level. This took post uh, quite one. a pummeling is 54 inches above ground. Ah, same again. Okie okay. Right. So we'll add up those scores on the doors. Let's move over to the uh, blue team. Okay. 48 inches above ground. Okay. Post number two. Post number two is... 58 inches above ground. Hmm. Number Post three. Number three. Looks a bit lower. 56 inches above ground. And number four. And post number four is 60 inches above ground. <laughs> and then Last but not least. Is 53 inches above ground. It's 53. 
Right, Professor, it's time to uh, head for a corner and okay. do our sums. Right. Give, give me an hour and we'll add them up. <laughs> well, guys, one thing's for sure. I won't be calling either of you to put my fence in. I mean, you had five minutes to knock in five posts each and, all right, yeah, the blue team did it. But some of the red team's posts went in much further than the blue team. So, as you know, myself and the professor have been huddled in a the corner there doing our sums and it wasn't easy. But on this particular occasion, after doing our sums, the professor and I have decided that the winner of today's round is the blue team. Well done, guys. <laughs> Come on, a big round of applause. <laughs> well, you both give each other a really good hammering. But, uh, guys, Blue Team, you did win on the better design. Of course, yours was more mechanical, whereas the Red Team had to do a lot by hand. And I know your machine broke on it, hammering in its first post, but to be fair, it could have been fixed if you had a bit more time, would yeah. it not? Oh, yes. Yeah? yeah? No well, you've got to yep. save yourselves then. Are you pleased? Yeah, I think so, overall. Yeah. You've had a nice day. Indeed. Great result. Great yeah. result. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we open this now? <laughs> you certainly can. I'll have a quick word with the red team. You must be a bit right, deflated, right, Flat Fours. Fix, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> really the, fix, the fix is in. Um, I mean, someone's been paid off here. You've got it's a complaint? Oh, it's absolutely disgraceful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the <director. laughs> He's just about to pop that cop, so uh, I'm getting out of here. Well, that's all we've got time for this week on Mutant Machines. Don't forget, join us the same time next week. See you then. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I've designed most things from tin cans to military projects, which I could tell you about, but then, of course, I'd have to kill you. Hello there, and welcome to Mutant Machines, the mind-boggling mechanical show where only the fistest and fattest... <laughs> <laughs> the fistest and the fattest? <laughs> oh, no!